What up, everybody? Dated back to OG power, Blanca Rodriguez has been a thorn in the side of the St. Patrick family ever since she was first introduced at the Raymond Jones crime scene in season five of Power. Blanco was in internal affairs for the NYPD at the time coming to investigate into Ray Ray's murder because he was a dirty cop who was killed at his flop. But while she was there, she noticed someone who stuck out like a sore thumb, U.S. Attorney Angela Valdez, who was there at the scene after giving Tasha Tariq's location at her office, thinking Ghost was who took out Ray Ray. And it eventually got to the point that Blanca became so obsessed with taking down James St. Patrick to the point she started working with Cooper Sacks, looking the other way as he did shady stuff like plant Terry Silver's phone in Ghost's hotel room. But to get the warrant for Ghost arrest, Blanca even went as far as taking a false confession from Andre Coleman saying he was there when Ghost killed Terry Silver and he watched the whole thing go down. So we already know that Blanca Rodriguez will go to any means necessary to try to get a conviction. And ever since Ghost's supposed death, all of her attention has been turned to Tariq St. Patrick, his son. To make matters worse for Tariq, he now also has a local New York prosecutor, Jenny Sullivan, willing to do anything to take him down as well. Even going as far as having Lauren Baldwin fake her death after Effie tried to kill her, all for the purposes of not taking down Effie for attempted murder, but as a way to try to get something on Tariq. Then to add fuel to Jenny Sullivan's fire after Cooper Sex died, he sent out letters to everyone, Jenny included, and his letter to her said, no matter who pulled the trigger, the person responsible for my death is Tariq St. Patrick. Even before Sax's death, Jenny and Blanca were so obsessed with taking down Tariq, Detective Whitman even picked up on it as he was trying to point them in the direction of Monet Tejada, who they had little to no interest in looking into. Monet even killed Whitman in Season 3 as Blanca and Jenny's attention remained on Tariq. But their whole case blew up in their face at the end of season three as Lauren Baldwin testified in front of a grand jury, letting them know that Jenny Sullivan made everything up and told her what to say. Making Jenny and Blanca look like complete fools and they got their case against Tariq and the Dejada shut down by their boss, Agent Medina. But we can believe that we haven't heard the last of Jenny and Blanca and they won't be going away that easy. In Season 3, Councilman Rashad Tate was the whistleblower for the Weston Ponzi scheme, causing Tariq to lose his inheritance that he had his lawyer transfer to Weston Holdings, and causing the feds to start investigating the Westons. Robert was completely ignorant to what his brother Lucas was into, but willing to take the fall if he needed to. Lucas, on the other hand, who was responsible for the whole Ponzi scheme, was going to desperate measures to avoid prison. Lucas contacted the DEA, letting him know that he was willing to cooperate against Braden and Tariq, and he also planned on pinning the entire Ponzi scheme on his brother, Robert, also to avoid prison. Lucas claimed to the DEA that he went into hiding, not because of the Ponzi scheme, but because he feared for his own life, not only knowing who was behind the Ponzi scheme, but that he also had information on a drug ring, and he told them to look into Crash Coin. And Tariq already knew what time it was and told Brayden that he needed to take out his uncle so that they could protect themselves. But Brayden was hesitant and didn't want to do it at first, even going as far as telling Tariq that he doesn't want to be the type of person who could kill his own father. But at the same time, right after that, Brayden's father, Robert, got picked up at his house and brought in for questioning, telling Brayden on the way out that sometimes doing the hard thing is the only thing we can do. And at that point, Braden knew what he had to do. So Braden showed up at Lucas's penthouse trying to convince him to sign the letter he wrote, getting Lucas to take full responsibility for the Ponzi scheme and promises to help Lucas flee the country and go somewhere where he couldn't be extradited. But Lucas pretty much mocked Braden, telling him that he's not giving up this life that he's living. Then went on to tell Braden that not only did he plan on snitching on Braden and Tariq, but he was going to pin the whole Ponzi scheme on Robert and Kiki. And this was the final straw for Braden as Lucas was leaning against the balcony. Braden grabbed him and threw him over as Lucas plummeted to his death. Braden catching his first body in the process. Now keep in mind all the problem that Tariq's first body caused. This was ultimately the whole reason both Ghost and Kanan were taken out. Kanan is someone to pin the murder of Ray Ray on and Ghost when he threatened to turn Tariq in for Ray Ray. 
Keep it in mind that Blanca took a DNA sample of Ghost at Club Truth to test to see if it would match the blood at the Raymond Jones crime scene. And it was a partial match, pretty much put into reek at the scene when Ray Ray was killed. In addition to that, Dre told Blanca that it wasn't Kanan who killed Ray Ray because he was in Washington, D.C. at the time. And told Blanca that he wasn't for sure who pulled the trigger, but he definitely knew that Tariq was looking for Ray Ray. So Braden is now dealing with the death of his uncle while he attempted to make look like Lucas took his own life, even leaving a note behind. When Braden talked to Kiki, she pretty much knew that it wasn't Lucas who wrote that letter, saying it didn't sound anything like him. On top of that, when Braden shoved Lucas over the balcony, he touched the ledge as he looked down, not even having on any gloves, then got out of Dodge without wiping his prints off of the glass. And there's also the fact that the hotel that Lucas was staying at will guaranteed have security cameras that the feds will look into and they'll see Braden walking into the hotel and also leaving the hotel during the same time frame that Lucas was killed. Then with the fact that Lucas was snitching on Braden, it pretty much makes this an open and closed case that could land Braden in prison for the rest of his life for first degree murder. Plus the fact that Lucas had called to become a state witness could only make things worse for Braden. But with that said, we already know that Blanca and Jenny really don't have any kind of interest in arresting Braden, but they would much rather get him to flip so they can take down their version of Moby Dick, Tariq St. Patrick. So most likely the easiest way they will get Braden to flip is by threatening to arrest his father Robert for the Ponzi scheme, maybe even throwing Trace in there also. Because of that, I think Braden will reluctantly turn snitch. Most likely, he will try to snitch on the Tejadas, probably Kane first. But the feds will only play him, telling him that he's going to take down the Tejadas. And he's going to take down Tariq St. Patrick, similar to Stacey Marks in Force. Probably even to get Braden to start wearing a wire. So just like the feds were willing to pin anything on Ghost and Power Season 6... They won't care what Braden can get on Tariq as long as they can just get him into custody. And this is where the big problem comes for Tariq. Braden knows of four murders committed by Tariq. Ghost, Jabari, Baz, and the Russian boss. Ghost and Jabari was only word of mouth or speculation. But Braden was actually there to walk in on Reek killing Baz. And he witnessed Tariq kill the Russian boss. Then to make things even worse for Tariq, Braden knows where Baz is buried. So just like we saw Kane unbury Ramirez in season one, we might also have Braden tell the feds where Baz's body is located at. Also very similar to how Tasha St. Patrick told the feds where Terry Silver's body was, giving them motive to arrest Ghost in Power Season 6. So with that said, there's a good chance that Power Book 2 will end with Tariq going to prison for murder and being sentenced to life. Possibly similar to the end of Power Season 3, when Angela Valdez walked into Club Truth to arrest Ghost. And also, let's not forget that power ended with Tasha St. Patrick going to prison for the murder of her husband, James St. Patrick. This way, they could always bring Michael Rainey Jr. back to the power universe at any time. Because I guarantee Blanc and Ginny are going to do some underhand things to get this conviction on Tariq. So he'll be able to use a lawyer later on to get this cane thrown out like Ronnie in Raising Kane. The trailer also shows Tariq standing in a very similar position that Ghost was standing right before Tariq shot him. Keep it in mind that when Tariq shot Ghost, Blanca Rodriguez was on her way to Truth to arrest Ghost before getting knocked out by Dre. So in the same way as Tariq was standing in the same position as his father, thinking he has triumphed over all his enemies, this could be when Blanca comes in to arrest him. But if Brayden does turn snitch and sets Tariq up to go to prison, let's just hope that Tasha or Yaz or Tommy, Ghost, somebody shows up at the end and cancels his Christmas. Because we can't have no rat riding off into the sunset either. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.